Look who it is. It's good to see you. It's been like a month. I know. I have some explaining to do. I fully understand. Well, come on in. You're not going to get any explanations standing out there. Come on. Let's go. From the top. Drop that. Uh, yeah. Feel the funk, y'all. Uh, yeah. Feel the funk, y'all. Uh, yeah. You lay back in the cut. What's up? What's up? From Alpha to Omega. VHS to Beta. PlayStation to Sega. My skill is still greater. The sickest thing since BD. Wicked like BG. Live my life crooked like the left finger on ET. Please believe me. This be the realest thing I ever wrote. Right after talking to Pop. Puffing on heavy smoke. Laugh now. Cry later. My only dream in life was to rock a mic. Up in front of you spectators. And rock shell toes. Not gators. Show love. Let me first off say, it's great to see everybody again. I know I kind of disappeared for about a month there, uh, kind of unannounced. And right after, not long after, posting a video, a vlog, where I said I was going to post more frequently this year. So, kind of screwed the pooch on that one. My bad. Uh, I apologize. But some changes came about. Basically, I moved the office slash my workspace, studio area, whatever you want to call it, upstairs and the room that used to be as a bonus room in our house used to be the family theater room because we have three kids and two dogs and the old office was downstairs right in the middle of the house there was constant kids running by and dogs and, and our house is a very busy household so it was very difficult to concentrate and get anything done down there so we had this nice big room up here that was being underutilized and this room was big enough that we were able to consolidate and still keep a media area up here for the family and give me a, a desk area also so kind of made the most sense so for the last month i had to do a total overhaul in this room i ripped up the floors, I put wood down, we repainted pallet wood walls, and uh, it took a good month to do the overhaul of this room. I built some of the furniture in here, the shelves. So that's what today is gonna be about. We're gonna do a office tour. Uh, I know I did one not too long ago. Obviously it's a brand new space and there is some new stuff. So let's get started. The crown jewels of the desk setup, the monitors, are still my triple monitor display. Still got the two 32 inch ultra wide LG monitors. Uh, love those things. LG actually is, I think they're either out now or they're very soon to be released, coming out with 5K versions of those monitors, which I'm super excited about. I'm gonna try to get a hold of a pair of those. But for right now, these are great. Uh, I love them for productivity because the super wide display allows you to fit a whole lot on it. Uh, up above still the BenQ 34 inch 4K monitor, very color accurate and 4K. So if I'm doing some 4K editing, comes in really handy. For peripherals, everything looks real similar. Still using the ASIO MK Mac mechanical keyboard. It's great. Get the wired version if you're going to get one. The, the Bluetooth version doesn't have such good reviews. I think it has some connectivity issues, but the wired version is fantastic. I love it. For a mouse, still, in my opinion, the best mouse on the market, the Logitech MX Master Mouse. Super ergonomic, great controls, programmable buttons. I've got a full review on it. Great mouse. I do, however, use the Apple Magic Trackpad. You can pinch and zoom and stuff. So I do like the combination of the Magic Trackpad with the mouse. Still got my Negan Funko Pop up there for just decoration. Negan, in my opinion, probably the best addition to that show in the last couple seasons. For speakers, still have the Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers. Super compact, really stylish looking speaker. Great sound quality, pretty affordable. And they're sitting on the DS1 stands, which are also made by Audio Engine to go with those speakers. Over on the far side, over there, people, I've had several questions about that. That is just a salt lamp, a uh, Himalayan salt lamp or salt lamp. Supposedly, the salt releases positive ions, which is supposed to promote a sense of well-being. I don't know. Very likely could be hippy-dippy bullcrap. I just like it, and I think it looks cool, so boom. And over... To the other side, the very popular, if you've watched any desk setups, you're gonna probably see a set of those headphones. Those are the Audio-Technica M50s. Hugely popular, good quality, great headphones. Really like them, Audio-Technica M50s. And 
still on my glass head over there, which uh, some people have asked about. That's just a glass head. And down on the bottom of the desk, I mounted my USB SD card reader and a 3.5 millimeter jack. I have just really kind of come to think that's the best place for that stuff. I'm a big fan of keeping a desk kind of clutter free and fairly minimal. That gets that stuff off the desk, but still keeps it at very close reach. Huge fan of doing that, just mounting that stuff right under your desk. Uh, speaking of the desk, very similar. Uh, there are some changes though. Still using the Alex drawer unit, kind of Ikea hack two Alex drawer units with a desktop for my desk. Most people use an Ikea countertop of some nature for their desk, which is what I had used downstairs in the other office. Up here, what I've done is I've just custom made my own desktop. What that allowed me to do is custom make the size. I wanted it a little longer and a little deeper than the Ikea countertops. So uh, my old Ikea countertop was 98. This one is 106. I forgot the depth of the Ikea, but it was a little shallow. This one I made several inches. I think I made it about six inches deeper. Also with the desktop, because I made it myself, I was able to get a nice kind of uh, distressed, damaged look. Uh, I beat the hell out of this thing. I beat it with chains. I burned it with torches. Uh, I did everything I could to make it look like old wood that was kind of reclaimed. Uh, reclaimed wood can be really expensive. So sometimes to cheat that, you can take new wood and kind of distress it and beat it up and make it look like old wood. So that's what we did here. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. To match that, uh, speaking of these columns back over here, covered those columns in pallet wood just to kind of tie in that reclaimed wood kind of feel. All of the LED light strips you see, these are Wi-Fi enabled smart light strips. I can control the color and everything else with the Echo. I really like it. So you can go turn the monitor lights green. Turn the desk lights red. Okay. And I did that with all the lights in the entire room. Also over here, if you might notice, you see some little, wait, where is it? It's always hard to do this behind your back. Over here and over here. You'll see some more speakers. You might say, Jeremy, why the hell do you have speakers on your desk and mounted on the wall right next to you. Well, the speakers on my desk are my computer speakers. I use those just for when I'm at my computer. These are the back two speakers for my surround sound. So when we get to the other side of the room, you'll see there's kind of a media consumption area over here. And those are the back surround speakers for the surround sound. So over the side here, still have the same chair from downstairs. New light from Ikea, really cool, smart bulb. And this is the same side table I had downstairs, which is that table that I built from reclaimed wood. For my computer, I still have the Mac Pro 8 core, which I know getting to be a little bit of a dated computer. Mac is well overdue to reboot the Mac Pros, and I think they are slated to do that, I think it's this year or next year, I think it's this year, they'll be releasing a new Mac Pro. So really, really excited to see that. For you PC guys, I know you're gonna freak out. I, on the last video, I got several comments of people, oh, you could have built a PC for, I know, I get it. You PC master race guys, I understand you hate Macs. I very much so live in a Mac environment in my house. I have all Mac products. So it just makes more sense for me to keep up with the Mac. I have always been happy with Mac. It's always worked really well for me. I, like I said, I have iPhones, I have iPads, I have Apple TV, so it all just integrates together. It just works. So if you're a PC guy, I'm sorry. I know you don't like it, but you know, it is what it is. And last but not least, I don't know if you can see under here, wire management is on lock as always. I route all my keyboard wires through my desk. These are all tucked up. I route my speaker wires through my desk to hide them. All the monitor wires through the wall to hide them. Everything's tucked up with a cable management system up under here. And for the chair, because your chair is always an important part of your setup because you sit your butt in it all the time, I just have an Ikea Milberg, Milgebert, Milgeberted, Milg, Milbert. I'm horrible with the Ikea names, but it is a white Ikea leather office chair. Really affordable, comfortable. It's got a nice high back, so it kind of supports your back for long sitting hours. And it was like under a hundred bucks. So I've been very happy with it so far.
One of the cool things that I also added that I found while I was in Ikea is they now have these wireless mounts that you can buy that I built into the desk when I built it. Uh, and you can do this for any desk. You just have to drill a hole in the desk to put it in there. It's really pretty cool. It sits very flush and flat to the desk. And as long as your phone supports wireless charging, you just sit your phone right down on top of it and Bob's your uncle while you're sitting there working, your phone's charging without having to deal with all those wires. So anyway, that is this area. Ah, one last thing I did want to mention, you might see these panels, like this panel and that panel, these tan colored panels. Um, and what those are, well, let's get a closer look a little bit. Okay, so what these guys are, these are acoustic panels. I took a thin piece of plywood, I mounted a frame on it, and then in that I put thick carpet padding and then covered it with material. So all these, I don't know if you can see, but these are smushy cloth covered panels, which what that does if in a theater room is it keeps the room from sounding like echoey and hollow and keeps your surround sound more true because these panels absorb sound, uh, which translated well to this being an office slash place for me to shoot videos because it's also good when you're doing videos to get good sound. Uh, so yeah, you'll see these all over this room on the walls and these are not just random squares that I painted on the walls or something. These are actually acoustic panels. So yeah, pretty neat. Okay. This is the other half of the room. This is the kind of media area. We all come up here and watch movies and binge our favorite Netflix shows and all that good stuff. What we have on the wall over here, this is a Samsung 75 inch 4K TV. Big fan of this TV so far. It was actually almost a little distracting at first how crystal clear everything was. Uh, my wife was actually distracted by it at first, but really just crispy AF picture on these new 4K TVs they're coming out with. Just awesome, awesome picture. It's a totally new viewing experience. Uh, around behind it, more LED lights. Down below here is an Ikea console. These consoles are really cool. You can get them in Ikea and you can basically customize these consoles any way you want them. You can buy a wall mounting kit so you can mount it to the wall and have it floating. Really pretty cool little console to put under your TV. For a receiver, I have a Denon receiver in there. I'll link everything that I talk about in this video below so you guys can find it if you're interested in it. It's just a 5.1 Denon surround sound receiver. That one I found on Amazon for I think around 250 bucks and it's 4K capable. And this is just a inexpensive Yamaha 5.1 surround sound system, uh, but it sounds really good. I've been very happy with it. If you're an audiophile and you have you know, $1,500 surround sound speakers, this probably isn't gonna be for you, but if you're looking for an inexpensive, high quality way to add surround sound to a room just to kind of enhance that movie watching, TV watching experience, Yamaha 5.1 surround sound on Amazon, Bob's your uncle. These are some custom made shelves on either side that I made. Again, distressed wood to kind of tie in with the theme with the desk and the, and the pallet wood wall over here behind the TV. I put all that stuff in myself. These shelves are made from just regular old lumber you can buy at Home Depot and some iron pipe. Super inexpensive and easy way to build some wall shelves and I think they look just really dope. So. The big behemoth here behind me. This is another uh, custom built thing that I built myself. A lot of times when you want something particular for a space, it's either absorbently expensive to buy it or you just can't find exactly what you want. So in my like, personal experience, that's when I found that just building it yourself is better. It's just usually cheaper and you can do exactly what you want if you build it yourself. So this is a basically a big platform couch. This is a queen size memory foam mattress and on the other end down there there is a twin memory foam mattress running that way so these are two mattresses and i built a big basically platform type thing for them to sit on because i needed a couch that would fit this space and was big enough to be able to fit my whole family uh, of five up here so we could all watch tv together so and it's super comfortable the only downfall is it's really hard not to fall asleep up here allison i don't think has made it through a movie yet because she falls asleep 
It's super, super comfortable. And I put it on casters, so if I need to roll it around because it's so heavy to move it, to get it out of my way to shoot or film anything, uh, it's on wheels. The wheels obviously lock, so when you sit on it, it doesn't roll out from under you. But, um, I mean, look at this thing. It's huge. I'll take my shoes. I mean, look. It's, it's like, it's, it's ginormous. I mean, you can fall out on this thing easy. Super smushy and comfortable. Whole big... Very, very comfortable though. Big fan. One of my favorite things up here is this new couch. I really, really love it. One of the other things that's really cool about uh, all the smart bulbs and it hooking to your, your Echo and stuff that I was talking about. On the Echo, this is something I found out recently. You can set up programs. So you can tell, or routines they're called. So you can basically tell it like when it's time to watch a movie, I can say, movie time. Okay. And then, she automatically dims all the LED stuff to 50% and all the house lights or the above lights to 5%, I think I set it to, so that it's, it's ready for watching. And hold on, I'll show you how dark it is if I turn off my video light here. See, it's like movie time. It's good. Tell it like to say when you say good morning to turn the lights on, read you a news briefing and read off your calendar for the day. So smart bulbs, they're pretty awesome. I highly recommend them. So on to the last thing, which is the camera gear. So camera gear time. All right, so camera gear time. We're gonna go handheld for a few. All right, so a little beside, uh, behind the scenes on some of the camera stuff I use. For instance, this was the key light I was just using or to light me up a little bit, and it's an aperture light. It is a 672 Amarand with, this is like, I forgot what it's called, but it's like a lantern type thing they sell. It's actually meant to go on that big dog over there. We'll get into that in just a second, but let me show you. Let me get this over here. Basically, what I did is I just hung this over top of that LED panel just to soften the light up a little bit. I love all Aperture stuff because A, they come with a remote, so you can boop, 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 which is really, really handy to be able to turn that on and off uh, remotely so you don't have to get up and down when you're filming. Also, the fact that you have a bunch of connectivity. You can see that right now I'm battery powering them, but they also come with the cables to hook them to wall power. Most of the time, most of the lights come with the ability to hook them to a USB power source. So just tons of power options, really affordable, high quality stuff from Aperture. And if you can see in this camera closet, it's a little dark in here, but Aperture case, Aperture case, Aperture case. They send all their stuff with super high quality cases, which, which I really, really like. They also have a smaller version of this light, which is like a 198, I believe that I have. And it's also awesome. It's not quite as bright. You can't use it for like a main light source, but it's great for accent lighting. Tripod with friction arm for putting miscellaneous stuff on. For sound, stand, external audio recording is what I prefer to do most of the time. That is a Zoom H5. Big fan of that audio recorder. All the Zoom products are good, but uh, the H5 is the one I chose to go with. And that is going via XLR up a boom pole to an Aperture Deity, which is Aperture, same company that makes those lights, crack at a microphone, a shotgun microphone, and it is outstanding. It is built like a tank, and if you look at reviews on YouTube about that, a lot of people compare it to much more high-end mics at around $1,000, and you can usually get this one for around $300. So I've been very, very happy with that microphone so far. Uh, might do a full review on it one day. Back over there in the corner, you can see my absolute favorite light. Again, I'm sorry this sounds like an Aperture commercial, but uh, it is an Aperture 120C, or I'm sorry, 120D with a Aperture light dome. That is my absolute favorite light of all time. Again, remote controlled. That is a huge soft light source and it is great for lighting uh, videos. That's what I use for most of my talking head stuff. One reason I was using this setup today is because I was moving around a lot and that, if you can tell, is fairly big. So it's kind of a pain to move around. So I was going mobile with a little, little lighter setup today. What you are seeing here right now is a 16 to 35 Canon 
L lens. That is what I'm shooting on, and I'm shooting on a Canon 5D Mark IV. Right now, because I'm not using this, I'm using a Rode video mic to get sound straight from the camera. Let's see, in the gear closet. Let's, um, let's see, there's lenses. Let's go about this a different way, because the lighting in here is just freaking horrible. good all right so now this is the 120d that i was just showing you with the light dome and again remote controlled it's a great light source i love the light it puts off i think it looks good so this is kind of the more standard setup you're used to seeing when i'm doing talking head type stuff the other camera that i use the 1dx mark ii uh, and the reason for that is a it's a beast of a camera and b it's got 120 frames a second those are my two main cameras i've traded in or gotten rid of most of my other cameras because i found that my 5d mark IV and my 1dx were pretty much the only cameras i was using some of my favorite lenses right now what you're seeing is a canon 24 millimeter 1.4 l lens it is great and it has a really, really crispy picture. So really big fan of that for kind of more wide angle stuff. I also have a 70 to 200 lens that I love using. It really compresses the background very nicely. It's just, just a beast of a lens. It weighs like 8 million pounds, but it's a great lens nevertheless. Another one of my favorites is the 16 to 35 L. It's really good for like ultra wide because it's at 16 millimeter uh, focal length. The only other one worth really noting is the Canon 100 millimeter 2.8L, which is a macro lens, which is great for getting those really detailed close-up shots. Uh, it's also good for, you know, longer shots because it's a 100 millimeter lens. For gimbals, I'm using mostly Zion stuff right now. Uh, I have a Zion Smooth Q that I've done a review on that I really, really like for iPhone. The new one that I just got that I did a, a sneak peek of and I've got the production model now, so I'll be doing a full review on very soon, is the new Smooth 4 they just came out with. It's got a follow focus knob. Really, really awesome. Looking forward to using that more. I, I used it a little bit and I think that thing is going to be beast. I really think that's going to be a great, great gamble for people that are wanting to use a smartphone to capture some high quality footage so excited about that for my big cameras you, you've got to get a beast of a gimbal to hold those things i used to use uh, a glide gear i don't use that anymore because it just couldn't hold the payload of the cameras that i'm using these days so i went over to a crane 2 and uh, i'll be doing a review on that soon also it has a high enough payload that it could even handle my 1dx mark ii which is basically one of the biggest cameras the heaviest cameras you can use before you get into your reds and your other like massive camera and it's got some really cool features like pov and f it can do follow uh, tracking kind of stuff it's got the follow focus knob so won't get into that too much because i'm going to be doing a full review on that real soon but so far what i've used really high quality big fan of it so far for getting some of the b-roll you see when i'm doing product shots i use a rhino slide which i don't know if you've heard of this company but they're um great slider company and they're a little more affordable than some of the other sliders that I've seen. They have the Rhino slide and then you can match that with Rhino motion and Rhino arc. And the slider is just a slider itself. It's a manual slider, but when you pair it with the motion and the arc, what that allows you to do is get those really cool slides where it's following, it's tracked onto an object and it's rotating around and you're getting that ultra smooth footage. It's carbon fiber, it's fairly lightweight, comes with a nice carry in case and it's just as far as sliders go uh, I'm I'm sold on that one all right guys so I, that about covers it so that is the new office tour uh, I'm pretty excited about this new space I think it's gonna allow me to be a lot more productive lots of videos planned coming forward so looking forward to that the last thing I want to mention before I sign off for the day is I did during the break hit the milestone of 10,000 subscribers and I just wanted to take a minute to say I greatly appreciate each and every one of my subscribers that spends a portion of your time watching my videos and it means a lot to me and I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. So hitting that 10,000 subscriber milestone was, was big for me and I truly appreciate it. In honor of that, 
the kind folks at Aperture have offered to do a giveaway. So they sent me a light, one of the 198C lights that we're going to do a giveaway on soon. Did not have time to work out all the details before filming this video. So I'm gonna pan out some details on how exactly I'm gonna run the contest and see I'm, there may be some other prizes that get thrown into the bundle. So far we definitely at least have Aperture on board donating that, which we greatly, greatly appreciate from Aperture. Just so you know, uh, the talking up the aperture lights was not because they offered to do a giveaway. This does not influence my opinion at all about aperture products. I had the 120C and the Deity and the Mini 20 kit that I use. I had all of those lights well before aperture. I ever had any kind of relationship with aperture and they reached out to me. So um, don't think that that had any bearing on my opinions of recommending these lights because I was using these well before they offered to do the giveaway or send me any products to review so but full disclosure yeah so really exciting stuff I'll probably try to get those details ironed out and get a video out detailing uh, all of that within the next week looking forward to that and again that's just my way of trying to give a little something back uh, because I am truly grateful for all you guys that uh, take your time to watch my videos and have subscribed to the channel so thank you very very much all right guys so I think that about covers it. Uh, I, hopefully I can get this thing edited down to a reasonable time frame so it's not four hours long, but uh, we covered a lot today. Hopefully you found this video useful and you got some uh, knowledge out of this. Maybe this gave you some ideas or sparked some ideas for you if you're doing your office. Uh, if you did enjoy this, as always, please feel free to smash that like button. If you are not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. And uh, that's it for me today, guys. Hope everybody has a great week and we will see you in the next video. Turn the house lights red. Oh, shit. Got angry in here. Got angry. Looks angry. Kind of like those PC Master Race guys when you talk about Max. This is like what the inside of their brain looks like.